here we are. It's about 8 a.m. Uh, November. It's a date today, the 12th of November, 2021. Um, I'm heading down to Tamari now um, to, to have a look around the the prominent karate locations in in Tomari. So we're gonna go have a look at um, the new Nagamine Sensei stone next to the Matsumoto Kosaka stone. Um, we're gonna have a look at the the cave, the Chanan cave or the Chinto cave, whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll see the port um, and we'll see the foreigner's graveyard and so just heading here past Shiredo so this is Sogenji Dori if you know where Shiredo is um, from Shiredo just head right up the street towards the port away from Shuri if you go the other way on this street it will take you all the way up to Shuri Castle um, so let's go the other way to that and just keep walking until you hit the end of the street which is the ocean and the port um, it should only take you sort of five or ten minutes. So I hope the sound is still okay. Um, if it's not, I'm just going to have to voice over it, aren't I? Um, I've walked for another few minutes up from Sharedo and um, I've come to the crossroads here, which are the crossroads where you'd lead up to the Tomari Elementary School, just up the street there. Um, on the left here, there's a really nice ramen place. So if you're coming down here at lunchtime, um, Feel free to to head into to Ryuya, the ramen shop here. Um, it's recommended. It's very nice. Um, and we're just gonna wait for the lights and head across. Well. Um, We'll grab a coffee when when we get uh, closer into Tomari. Um, it would be cool to to um, we can get one near the foreigners' graveyard maybe and have a look at that. Um, we have come up now. You can see that we're going past the petrol station and the family mart. Keep going till you hit the 58 and the the big blue bridge that crosses over it busy because it's 8 30 in the morning right now and I guess everybody's going to work and to school and to all the different places um but when we get into Tomari it will quieten down I'm sure so here I've walked right to the end of the street um if I follow this curved road around it will take me onto the 58 and towards the Budokan um I'm not I'm gonna go straight across um, we're gonna head up these stairs here. You can see from here, uh, you can see the big bridge. Oh, you can't because I didn't get high enough. Okay, you see from the top of the bridge, um, out over the port. Um, we're looking down on the 58. Um, you'll know you're in the right spot when you see the building with a big ribbon on it. Um, you can also see the 58 on the other side. Uh, so we head across this bridge. And if you go over into the port over there, there's actually a monument to Basel Hall um, and it's quite cool to just go have a look at, at the port as well um, but we can do that on the way back um, we're gonna head down the stairs here so you'll be coming down the stairs right in front of the blue the blue ribbon building And then take a U-turn. And then we're gonna take the first left, okay? Um, I can leave a Google 
map link in the YouTube description, which might help a bit. Um, not sure how loud it is and how well the sound is doing. It sounds very loud in real life. All right, so I'm gonna take this first left here. But basically just heading right into the heart of Tomari, really. The first stop we're making is uh, Nagamine Sensei's stone, the new, the new memorial to Nagamine Shoshin Sensei that has been placed right next to the memorial to uh, Matsumura Kosaku. And that's in Shinyashiki Park. Um, I've been here a few times. It took me quite a long time initially to find it. Um, the cave as well. The cave is quite a difficult one to, to find. It took me a few tries to find that, but we did eventually. So you keep walking down the street until you get to the first uh, zebra crossing, the first crossing, and opposite that, you can see through there, big boats, um, the big boats getting ready to, to go out for the day. So instead of doing that, we're going to cross the street. Uh, let's hope somebody stops. So we can go across. You know, I don't think it's the law here to stop. Okay, this nice guy let us cross. So from there, we can take the the first little road right up next to the crossing and go down it so it would be going right from where we were just at from the crossing it's the first right um we got this little side street here this is kind of like a shortcut um because i've been here a lot in the past um the past couple of weeks um, and then there's the first set of junctions here. It's not these ones. Walk past the first set of crossroads. Keep going. Um, it's the second set. All right, so we're going to take a left at this, this shop. I mean, shops are not a very good, reliable indicator of, um, of directions at all because it changes so much here. But um, take a left. The Google pin will hopefully help. If you don't have a connection, then I guess you just got to follow the walk that I did. And then it's right here on your left, this park here. Do you see? Right here, there's a big Gajimara tree, a beautiful big Gajimara tree. You would have seen in my my video, maybe the opening ceremony video, this looks a bit familiar. Um, there's a, uh, a slide and a, a seesaw and a couple of uh, springy animal things. And there's a cat. Hello. You're not friendly, are you? Huh? Are you friendly? What do you think? Oh, it is friendly. Hi. Or not. No, nope. thought it was friendly, but it's not. Here we are, spin around, and we are at the Matsumura Kosaku Monument and the very new Nagamine Shoshin Sensei Monument. Um, you can see the, the little uh, shrine here that the, the monk did his ceremony at, um, which was really cool. And then here we have the Matsumura Kosaku monument um, right here, looking a little bit old and weathered, I guess. Um, and then right opposite, here we have the brand new Nagamine Shoshin Sensei one. Um, yeah, it's got English and it's got um, Japanese. And then on the side, on the side around there, Around here, let's walk around. On the side around here, it's got um, the the people who have 
donated to it. Donated to to help have the stone put here. It's it's very very shiny and new, isn't it? And the cat's coming now. Why you come back? Huh? <laughs> and I think it seems to be super scared of people. But yeah, here we are. Should we move on from here to our next um, location? Oh, now you're really friendly, huh? Hi. Hello. Are you somebody's pet? Hmm? Must be somebody's pet. He's very well looked after, very clean and very shiny. Don't have any food. What can you smell? Oh. Yep, so there we are. You've got the Nagamiya Sensei and Matsumura Stone and a free pet cat. All right, we're gonna head out of the park here. I um, always wondered if I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> I always get like snotty whenever I get near cats. All right, well, let's move on. So we came out of the park and we came left, okay? You gotta go left. And then we'll come back for coffee soon after we've seen the cave. So from here, we're gonna head right up to the cave. Okay, so come out of the park and go left and then go straight to the end. So we're gonna cross over these crossroads here. And keep going straight. got a lot more quiet you can see um, because we're getting further and further into the into the back streets so there's a there's a coin parking here that you could you could park at a new one um, if you if you decide to drive over here I mean you can also just park right outside the um, park and right next to the cave that's okay too both of those places are are not somewhere you'd get in trouble for for stopping for a few minutes all right so you're going to come to a dead end if you keep walking on this street um and the dead end is actually a school it's the tomari chugako over here so when you get to the dead end you need to turn right and go up the hill okay So we're gonna go go right and go up the hill. If we were to go left, it would take us back to the port and it would take us uh, to the foreigner's graveyard. And we will come back down that way. Uh, but for now, take the right and go up. Okay, alongside the school. Okay. And then what will happen is when you get a little way up the street, you'll see you come to a bit of a fork in the road. When you do that, don't go straight. Well, actually, it's kind of like a three way situation here. You can go back down into Tamari there. You don't want to do that. If you were to go straight, you would head up there. Don't go straight, head up the, the left side of the fork where you can see a Tomari, uh, a Tori gate, not a Tomari gate, I've got Tomari in my head, uh, where you can see a Tori gate, a red one, big red one. That's unlikely to move because it marks a temple. And then you want to keep walking up there and go past the the temple. You can actually um, go down those stairs into the temple and have a look at it. Um, it's interesting. We won't do that today, but you can. So, 
Then keep walking a little bit more. Up here. And then you'll start to see um, some graves, some traditional Okinawan style graves up here. You can see um, over there, there's a car park, a closed off one, but there's also um, some graves starting, some old, old ones, see? Um, what you actually want to do is, when you see this sign here, that says like, no parking, no stopping, no entry, all of this. Right opposite this sign and next to it, um, there's actually a little alleyway here into the graveyard. Do you see? In here. I spent a long time wandering around this graveyard looking for this cave. But it's, it's actually quite difficult, but easy when you know how naturally, like everything is. So you walk down this little alleyway um, alongside the gate. Now, this gate never used to be here, um, but it's quite recently built. So it used to actually be easier to get to. Now it is. And so keep going and you'll, you'll really start entering enter the graveyard. I mean, have a look at that. It looks like um, it's built from real castle walls, this one. It's beautiful um, and enormous. Uh, so you keep going right down here. Oh, wow. This one's open. That's, um, that's, that's very, very rare. Very rare. I wonder if we'll get in trouble for having a look. Should we? Just have like a bit of a look. I've never seen inside inside a hacker before. I bowed. Bow again. I mean I I never never seen seen what, what inside one of these looks like. And I'm not sure if many of you guys have either. Wow. That's quite cool, isn't it? There's um there's actually I hope the spirits don't come for me. There's actually like the urns. The urns are in here and it's so it's a kind of a, a cave kind of shape and there's a couple more urns but these ones look to be empty and open um at the back there there's some really old shisa statues um maybe it's like a family heirloom or something and there's like stones at the front that's um very rare and very interesting i mean this hacker looks looks quite new in in the first place right um it's not, it's not one of the old ones. Oh, wow, it's quite the, um, the lucky thing to see. We should bow again, just, just so the spirits don't, don't come for me. Um, and I don't get haunted or anything. I don't, don't want that. All right, so once you've, you've stopped and kind of looked at everybody's grave, I'm not sure if it's okay or not, but um yeah keep walking just kind of i guess try and be try and be respectful and then you'll come to here okay um the left side there's kind of a hole you're on on the top of graves at this point there's kind of a hole down into those ones there's one right in front of you here and there's a path off to the to the right so take the path to the right um sometimes it can be very overgrown keep your keep your eyes out for snakes and just be careful i guess um so check out that one so overgrown you can't even even really see it so you walk down this little path that we've just come on to keep going straight and then you will you will come to the cave of Chanan right here be aware there's always lots of bugs sometimes there are ladies praying at this uh at this cave and at this shrine um, I've been in here before um, it, it's kind of got two kind of levels to it um, if you go in there's some some interesting uh, monuments on the inside you, you um, like a few different uh, shrines to different gods I guess um, so I guess we can have a look shall we 
doesn't look like there's sort of like a problem with him going in and there's nothing and no one I can see. You know, I don't like spiders, see? That's um, kind of my problem in life. I really don't like spiders. So you can see here, there is a, a place where there's lots of ashes. So people have done lots of praying here. Um, it actually looks like back there, you can almost crawl way, way, way further back. So it makes you wonder kind of just how big this, this cave is. Um, up there, we, we went up there before. I can basically stand up at this point. Um, you can get up there, um, but it doesn't really lead anywhere. Um, there's another monument here, um, another place to pray where people have prayed. And then it's just kind of super, super rocky on the outside here. Um, I mean, it could be livable. I think it probably was livable. Whether anybody did live in here or not is, is a complete another question, really. Uh, story's debatable. I mean, you could, you could live in there. Um, it'd be a place for shelter, for sure. Um, so, I don't know. It is possible. It is big enough. And there are places that you could potentially sleep and get cosy. Um, yeah, so I guess if it's the elements or in there, you'd go in there, but not sure. This is now um, seen as, as a, a cave and a uh, sacred place for the fire god. This uh, monument here is where you would pray to the fire god. The ones inside the, the cave, I'm not really sure who or what they're for, but there are usually um, some ladies here praying and, and, um, and that kind of thing. Uh, if you're adventurous or you're practicing for trail runs, like James and I were. That's the big bridge you could have seen from when we went over the big bridge back in Tomadi. Um, so we've got really close to it. Uh, you can actually climb down and over and through all of here. And it will take you directly, basically, to the fish market. Um, I'll take you the easy way back today. We'll just head back the, the same way that we came. And you can see, see another hacker here, a really old one. There's nothing, nothing in that one, really. Um, but it's, it's, it's very, very interesting, I find, the, um, the whole uh, death and religious, spiritual situation here. You can, you can also go and just kind of explore a bit more. There's lots and lots of um, different, different places and different graves and different styles to have a look at um, in this graveyard. So just come back out the same way that you went in, really. I mean, it's, it's really quite a, basically a straight path. Um, back out. You go go back past the the open the open grave and the magnificent one that's there. And that's the very old traditional shape of one too. Um, these look to be quite old as well, actually. Maybe after the war, though. These ones here. They're definitely not kind of modern day ones. Kind of built like terraced houses, aren't they? These ones. So, come back out from the, from the graveyard and the cave. So, so far we've seen the Matsumura Kōsaku Monument, the new Nagamine Shōshin Sensei Monument, the Cave of Chanan. And so, head back down the hill, come back out the graveyard and head right, go down the hill. Um, and we're going to walk down now and have a look at the foreigner graveyard because that's always a bit interesting and it's very very close to all of this stuff so makes sense to to head down there so you basically just walk down the hill um, past the shrine and past the gate back basically until you hit the ocean um, and you'll see the the foreigner graveyard vending machines in case you you need a drink I think we're gonna get um, coffee from from the family mart. If you wanted to, you can head down into the shrine, take a look. Um, New Year is coming up here soon, and next year is the year of the tiger. I'm not a tiger, I'm a monkey, but next year's year of the tiger, and everywhere's getting ready for New Year now. Um, like all the decorations are coming out, and the food orders you can buy. Uh, I guess the temple is going to be getting ready soon. It's obviously their busiest, most profitable time of the year. 
um, if you have a dojo, you should probably replace the blessings that you have in your kamidana. And each year you're supposed to take the old one back to the temple where they will burn it, like burn it, like God burn it, or uh, uh, spiritually burn it properly, I guess, how they see it is properly. And then, um, and then you get a new one, a new blessing for a new year. And, and I guess that's what you do every year, if, if you can. Um, yeah, so we're now back at, at school. You can see the school up here. So I've just literally come straight down one road from the, when we came out of the graveyard and where the cave is. Um, and it's taken what, sort of like three minutes or so. And it's right down there. Right down there is where the Matsumura Kawasaka monument is. So we'll keep going straight. We haven't, we haven't come this way yet, but it's simple. So don't worry. And you'll see this little white wall coming up here. And that is the International Cemetery. That's got a very rich and very interesting history to here. Here we are. It's um, the oldest graves are these ones, these ones over here. Um, but now there's sort of like 200 and more graves in here. There's a monument to Commodore Perry as well. Um, let's go take a little bit of a look. Um, and there's a really nice story as to how, how this uh, cemetery came to be. Let's go, let's go in and have a look. Many of you probably already know and have already been here, but just in case you haven't, or in case you just kind of want to see it again, you have the, the International Cemetery. We can head in here. Let's open the gate. Hold on. It's, um, it's like a Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children, isn't it? This one. It's not, it's really not, but the gate is, <laughs> is quite spectacular. All right. So, here we are, and there's a beautiful uh, description here. I'll read it for you. The burial ground was named the Uranda Cemetery, or Foreign Cemetery, and contains the tomb of 22 people from foreign countries, six Chinese from the Xing period, 10 Americans, two Englishmen, one Swede, one French, and two unidentified individuals. The earliest tombs dating back from 1718 to 1785 are those of the Chinese who died while in Okinawa, were buried in this cemetery. The Americans included some of those who attended Commodore Perry's visits to the island between 1853 and 1854. The two Englishmen were Henry Amour, an English teacher at the prefectural middle school, who died in 1908 and William Hares, a sailor whose funeral was generously arranged by the villagers of Tamari. At present, there are about 300 tombs, most of which are Americans. This place is sacred to the memory of those lying buried here and bears witness to the history of Okinawa and its people's care for humanity. And this was put here in March 2000. So it's really beautiful, isn't it? And it is, Okinawa has this, this care for everybody, which I, I just really, really love. So there's the big monument right there to, to Commodore Perry. Up there. Oh, we're a bit wonky. And then you can, you can walk over the path here and take a look at the, at the cemetery. So you've got all the, the newer, um, I said I won't go on the grass, but we're going on the grass. Um, we've got all the newer style graves here that would be the American ones. Um, very, very uh, reminiscent of what you see, what I see, because I've never been, um, of the, the American graveyards for those that fought in, in the war. This looks very, very um, similar to that. Uh, we've also got, let's go have a look at this big one over here and see what this is about. We've also got um, a couple of uh, Japanese Okinawan people that didn't didn't want to do the traditional Okinawan style belief and burials, maybe Christians, um, and and that's how they've ended up in this one. 
So this is an enormous one, this one. This is a uh, JJ Doss, born in 1818 and died in 1843. Here. Oh wow. Quite interesting. Here lies the body of Reverend Friar Matthew Adnett of the Paris Foreign Mission Society. Apostolic missionary who died in the Rufius, 1st of July 1948. Though art a priest forever. That's an enormous grave for one person, isn't it? Uh, we have Thomas McCall, a US Army ret. Not sure what ret means. I know what vet means, but uh, well, we have this one here, Archibald Black Blank Kinsey, 1930 to 1969. Um, these ones make me really sad. They're just unmarked and it just says American on it. Um, yeah, they're, they're um, interesting. So... Well, I'll keep walking around a little bit. We've got Kiyoshi Takahashi, US Army World War II. Uh, husband and wife there. So we'll head around here a little bit. I wonder where the English guy is. This is definitely one of the Chinese people. 1893, they were put here. Um, I think we figured out before that the oldest section is this corner over there. Um, there's actually some babies in here too, which is, is super sad. I'm not really sure how, how babies came to be. Um, and I'd also quite like to know where the English guy is. What was his name? William. William. Uh, oh. oh, the boat made me jump. The boat's heading out. Oh wow, that's cool. Isn't that enormous? Can't really see it from here, but it's Kume Line, so it's heading off to the the uh, Karama Islands, so it'll go to Tokashki and then Zamami. That boat. You know, the volcanic ash has been causing quite a problem recently here. Anyways, let's, um, let's get back to what we're looking for. We have really old, these big ones don't have any markings on them at all. Um, over here we have uh, this one must have been 1989 so it's not it's not really anytime soon this over here is uh, here he is uh, Amour 1840 to 99 Henry Amour. What does that say? It's covered in um in uh like uh, ivy kind of stuff. It says Henry Amour. Oh I can't read that. 1840 to 1908. It just says H dot E Amour. So that's cool. And there's um there's a a stone here. Um the cemetery was rebuilt on the 30th of June in 1955 by the city of Naha with the help given by the USCAR, USCAR, I don't know how you say that, as it has been destroyed by the World War II. Have a look at that, that's, that's kind of sad, isn't it? Who is this? This is um, 1934 to 1964. What does that say? Ooh, ooh. It's a bit rude if I use my foot, isn't it? Loistein Step Dean. Some um, you'd you'd almost not even see that this was here. Um Wow. Wan Chin Mei, born in Shanghai, died in Naha. May she rest in peace. Wow. It's um it's really quite the place to, to 
come and have a look. You could spend a long time walking around around here and having having a look at this, couldn't you? I don't remember who the other English this man was. Wow. Uh, in tribute, Samuel Oglesby dedicated himself to the development of Okinawan industries during the 15 years in his assignment to Yuska, Uska, I don't know what that is still, from March 1930? Looks like 1930. We, the Okinawan industrialists, pay our sincere tribute to his great services by erecting this monument. October the 20th, 1968. Oglesby Industrial Development Fund. Wow. A great contributor to the Okinawa industry. I wonder what he did and what he made. Born in 1911 in Virginia and deceased December the 1966 in Ginoan. Um, yeah, and his wife is here. It's, um, it's cool. All right. Well, we could just keep going, but let's let's start heading sort of back, back and out of here. Um, yeah, it's. It's quite cool, isn't it? Here, yeah? look at this one. This um is is wow. Billy J. Setzer, born and died twentieth of March seventy two. I would have been a baby. That's sad, and it's it's very very handmade. This one, isn't it? Wow. All right. So. We're going to head now um, back towards and through the port, I guess. You know, um, just down the street, down there, is where they store the Hari boats for the big festival that they do. That's where I guess they, they sort of all meet up to do the practices and stuff. So we'll cross over right here. I wanted to get coffee. I will do that when we get a bit of further through. It'll be all right. Don't want to get hit by the cars. They just kind of don't stop here. Yeah? Maybe the law is not the same. I mean, like in the UK, if if somebody is crossing a, a zebra crossing, the cars kind of have to stop, but they just kind of don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, anywho, we can we can head in around here to the port. Let's let's go through here and go have a look over here. Have a look at the port. I love the ocean. I feel like Moana. <laughs> love to to go spend a day at the ocean again. I should definitely do that. Here we are, right at the edge of the port. Look, right over here at the edge. There's there's a boat down there. Um, got the big ones over there. The ones you can take your cars on to some of the other islands. Um, and they all head off that way, out under this big bridge. Um, yeah. So, we're going to head around the port now. And we'll take a quick look at the Basil Hall um, memorial that was put here. Because that's very interesting. And I hadn't actually seen it until recently. I guess if you don't know it's there, then you never learn about it. Right. Then we'll get a coffee and then we'll finish. We've seen a lot in Tomari today. Um, it's definitely worth spending sort of like, you know, if you want to go on a morning walk before training, it's definitely uh, something I think you should do. Like a morning walk before training or you could even do a sort of nighttime walk after training. None of it um, is closed. I guess if you don't believe in ghosts then you'll be fine um yeah i should get on the other side really shouldn't I? i'm gonna get crushed by a car um yeah we're gonna have to do that we're gonna have to cross over we 
we'll keep walking around the bridge here and you'll see the dragons, the Kautamari dragons on the bridge that, that kind of represent the, the Hari dragon boats. And they do the dragon boat racing sort of in this port and around here every year, usually. Not recently because of COVID, but um, they're cool. They're cool to see if you can. We luckily got to see some, uh, some, Hari, baits, some Hari boats racing in, in Taiwan. So you got the cool dragons here. They're on sort of every side of the bridge, which is is cool. Um, and that's where kind of like the uh, the man-made river kind of heads all the way up. Um, right, actually near to our dojo and near Sharedo, it heads all the way up up through there. Um, I guess it stops flooding. Um, Really, it catches all the rainwater and sends it out to the ocean. <sighs> Not exactly sure. I mean, I guess they had to leave, couldn't landfill everything. So, over there, you've got, you've got some boats heading out, and we've come round to near where the big one is. This big one here. This is the ferry Zamami 3. Ferry Zamami number 3. So it goes to Tomari and then Aka and then Zamami. Maybe I would love to go see Aka. I haven't seen Aka Island yet. It's supposed to be really cool. I'm sure there's one other island near Aka Island that actually ends up being um, submerged completely for part of the year. I thought that was really interesting. Okay, so you get right here next to where the boats are. And just right over here, there is um, a new monument that they put actually in 2016, I think it was. So quite new, n newer than when I got here anyway, um, to, to Basel Hall, which is um, really interesting. It says, Captain Basel Hall, 1788 to 1844 of the Royal Navy with the sloop Lyra under his command, along with the flagship Alceste and their crews called at Naha and Tomari in the fall of 1816. They were on an official mission to convey British delegates to China. While on the island of Okinawa, known then as the Great Ruki, their crews enjoyed a cordial exchange of their friendship with the islanders for more than 40 days. Captain Hall, in his account of a voyage of discovery to the west coast of Korea and the Great Luchu Island, published in London in 1818, introduced the islanders to a western readership as being highly intelligent and righteous. On their return voyage, Captain Hall met with Napoleon and then, con then confined to the island of St. Helena. When Hall told Napoleon that the Rukia Islands were a kingdom without arms, Napoleon was astounded and openly incredulous. That episode is widely known among the islanders. We, the Okinawan people, cherish the memories of friendship with early western visitors to our island and feel proud of our national heritage, inspired by these memories and wishes that they be handed down to posterity. We erect this monument, Bicentennial, celebrating Captain Hall's momentous voyage, December 2016. So this, I believe, when I came here with James, was a little bit um, uh, debatable because he said that there's lots of guns that were being made here obviously he probably just didn't get to see it and I mean Basil Hall might have left a good impression but we know that Commodore Perry when he, when he arrived in 1850s and 60s really maybe didn't didn't leave such a such great um mark on the island so from here you can you can head over and into the port and there's a hotel actually right there um so I guess I'm just gonna kind of start heading back back towards home and grab a grab a coffee now
Right, so we're basically back to where we started. If you just go right straight there, you're at the Charado, um, the new Charado. Um, right down there is where the port is. And if you continue on up there, you'll end up going sort of more into Naha, closer to Kokosaidori. Um, yeah. So, see you on the next one, guys.